In this video, I'm going to show you some of the very cool and uber hard platinum trophies I have earned over the last six months. I've been earning trophies for over five years now. Some I earned were pretty tough and I'm proud of. Others, Bruh. yeah, I just pretend they don't exist. Ayo, you know what they say? Time for a new tax year, which means it's time for a new platinum trophy collection update. My last trophy hunting update was quite some time ago. In fact, I was still actually using this intro. How things have changed, how my videos have changed, how I've changed. I think I'm just even more annoying than before, but that's neither here nor there. That's fine, that's fine. But in this video, I'm gonna go through the last six months of trophy hunting and gaming, show you the games I succeeded at, the ones I failed at. I like to think that I'd never failed, I just kind of semi-retired. Before I begin with the juicy goods of this video, I just wanna apologize for the plain backdrop. I've moved house as of late, we're here now, but it's uh, been a long road and I've moaned a lot. I've complained a lot. Uh, but we, we made it, we made it. So to make up for the lack of backdrop in this video, I thought I would introduce my new child. And that is... Timmy. Timmy! Timmy. Timmy! Timmy is a pear tree, so he's going to help me become self-sufficient by providing me with fresh oxygen and fresh pears. Which is two things every gamer needs. And I also have this rubber sword. So if Timmy don't provide me with the goods, he don't give me no pears, he's going to meet a swift end by this rubber sword. And I imagine it'll take a good 50 attempts, so it's going to be quite an awful death for Timmy, so let's pray for Timmy, and let's get on with the video. Timmy! So I'd like to do a comparison first before we look at the games I've actually been playing over the last six months. So this is going back all the way to September of 2022, not 2020. 472 plats, completion percentage of 98.8%, 478 completed games, 6.63 trophies per day, and as you can see below that, I am rocking a sweet 483 Platinums, which means I've gained 11 Platinums in 6 months. Not bad, however, my trophies have gone down. My trophies per day have gone down to 6.14. My unearned trophies have gone up by like 75. And my completion percentage is actually taken hit. Now I did hit 99% for a very short time. When I had that 99% completion, it was beautiful. But I've just been starting too many games as of late. And I, I do plan on beating all of them, but it's just been like reducing the trophy percentage massively and I'm still sticking on that 98% and I've been there for like the my entire time of trophy hunting at this point and my world rank obviously has continued to plummet and now platinum chad is no longer in the top 5,000 in the world on PSNP. Shout out to you for plat bro it's been a hard road the decline in my life mirrors the decline in the world ranking on the trophy leaderboard I tell you that all right, so we're on the PlayStation now to look at some sweet ass games, some sweet ass trophies. And this is where we left it on my last ever video from six months ago about my trophies was on The Last of Us Part 1. Where I'd only had like two trophies or three trophies in the whole game. But before I show you any games, firstly, do you remember how great Outriders was? All right, Outriders was an absolutely fantastic game. Got the 100% for it very recently and it's just goddamn amazing. And everybody should play Outriders. It is the GOAT. And secondly, I know it's been a while since I've done this trophy hunting update. If you do enjoy them, Make sure you like the video. If this video hits a thousand likes, I'll make sure to do this more frequently to every two to three months. If we get the likes, that'll probably make me happy. <laughs> All right, so I got a Platinum and Ghost Runner, which is a great, fantastic first person cyberpunk-esque game. You play, as, you, you play as some robot dude with a sword and you just run about. And it is quite difficult to start with. It's a six out of 10 on PSMP. I, 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 it's a five or a six, I would say. It takes you a little bit of while to master it. The first five, six hours, you're literally just left there thinking, why am I playing this? Why is this so hard? But when you actually grasp the gameplay, it is really not so bad. I haven't done the DLC. I bought a DLC, and there's nothing worse. Firstly, DLC sucks. We all know that for trophies. But secondly, buying a DLC for like £15 and then still not playing it. Yeah, that's your boy. That's that's how I roll, because I, uh, I'm i an idiot. What I will say about this game is everyone should play it. It is a fantastic game. Highly recommend it. The boss fights in it do really suck, I have to say. There's only like two or three of them and they just are not fun at all. They're quite long. They're like, the whole fight's like six, seven minutes. Yes, you, you can see people on YouTube do it in like 30 seconds, but you've got to be so good to do it in 30 seconds. The only thing I will say is actually, there's actually a new difficulty where you can actually play and die in two hits rather than one, which makes it so much easier. I think it does disable some trophies. So you've got to be a bit careful and kind of read about the guide and stuff, you know. Talk to someone who knows more about the game than me, but just bear in mind that it does mean that when you finish the game though, you can do the cleanup with that extra hit, which makes the cleanup so much easier now than it ever was. Pretty standard game. Next is Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. Now this game is absolutely fantastic. If you play Call of Duty, 
this is my Call of Duty. Back in the day, it was it was Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2. I spent a little bit more time on Modern Warfare 2, but still, absolute banger of a game. When I was like 15, coming back from school and playing this game. Fantastic. I played it on stream, had a lot of fun. I've actually done a full video on this, so I'm not going to break this down too much. If you want to watch the full 30 minute video, you can by clicking down below or clicking here or doing something. I don't know. Really, really hard. The Mile High Club is so hard. You can cheese it. Eh, you know, you can cheese it if you really want to. You can play it on like easy till the very end of the level, leave, reload it in veteran for every level if you want to do that. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. Come on. That's just weak. It's weak. So if you're going to play it, do it legitimately and it will test you. The guy says this is like a 5 out of 10. I would say if you do this legitimately, it's at least a 7, if not closer to an 8. It's one of the hardest games I've planned. And when I think back to other games I've struggled with, like Bloodborne, certain sections like the Chalice Dungeons I did struggle with. But I was stuck on this one section and it's literally a 2 minute section. And you can watch the stream for about 6 hours. So I was replaying this and it took me about 500 attempts to actually beat this one Mile High Club level. And that shows how hard it is. I don't know. I don't think I ever spent 500 attempts trying to beat anything on Bloodborne. And then, of course, I had to finish off the best trilogy ever made for gaming and trophy hunting, which was My Name is Mayo. Fantastic game. I actually, made, I actually got the platinum for this on my 29th birthday because I'm, I'm that cool. I am just that cool. I did it on stream as well, and I'm, I'm proud of this one. You know, it's probably one of the best platinums I've, I've ever earned. In all seriousness, it's, it's not bad. It's actually the best My Name is Mayo, I'd probably say, which isn't saying much, right? But, you know, two hours, quite funny. It's funny on stream anyway, I don't know how funny it is just tapping X by yourself in a lonely room, drinking cans of Monster and just staring into the abyss, but on stream, highly recommend. Next we've got Chivalry 2, which I have to say is probably one of my favourite games of all time. It was suggested by Deadman in my Discord and he was like, let's get a few people together and play it and I saw it and I was just like, I was actually working on Marvelous Capcom at the time and I was like, I saw it and I was like, let's just, let's just fucking go. And it is the most chaotic, carnage, funny game you're ever going to play. First person or third person. PvP hack and slash honestly is hilarious. It is so fun. With Platinum Trophy, it's glitchy and it's a bit of a grind, like 100 games in total. You can boost 60% of these trophies. It's probably a 5 out of 10. It's not too difficult, but it's just so funny. I, even by yourself, it's still a lot of fun. You know, PvP games, jump in, spend 30 minutes, play a game, you know, go home and do something else. You know, like, I don't know, read, I guess. So I went up and finally did the DLC for Alien Elite Fire Team. Standby, still a really great game, really, really difficult. The DLC is pretty easy, it's literally just three more levels. You finally get a face, a big old boss in this one. The only problem is there's a survival mode, and all you have to do is beat 10 levels of any level, and they become progressively harder. But when you've actually beaten the game on the hardest difficulty and got the platinum, by the time you get level 10 and get this trophy, it's still not even equivalent to the second hardest difficulty. So it was just a slog, literally replaying levels over and over again that we'd already played, I'd already played easily 20 times a level because of how much you have to play to get the platinum. All right, next we've got God of War Ragnarok, a game I've never really spoke about other than the podcast. I didn't make really any videos. I think I made one three minute video for you guys. And I got the platinum, it took about six weeks and I had a lot of fun with it to the point where I can't decide which I actually think is better. God of War Ragnarok or God of War 2018. Let me know what you think. I just think it adds so much to the gameplay. I initially thought it was too similar. The first 10, 15 hours, I was like, it's slower and it's the same which I was like, ah, do, can I be bothered? But actually, stuff happens. You see you see the game, you play the game from different experiences, you get new weapons and modifications, and it actually is so much better. The only thing that felt a little bit lackluster, firstly, was the map was it's awful. It's one of the worst maps on a AAA game I've ever used. And the RPG elements, like you only level up like level 10 over the whole game. And I just didn't think it was very good. And I'm someone who loves RPGs. like. I can, I can see someone playing this game who likes God of War 2018 or like, likes linear hack and slash games, big AAA games like Uncharted, story driven games, and just thinking what the fuck is this uh, modification stuff, what the fuck is this RPG elements, they're just weak and confusing and just not very fun. And it feels like you can only upgrade things as you progress through the story. So you might as well not have them in because it's like, oh, you need a certain bit of wood to get your axe to level seven from level six, but you won't get it until you beat a story boss. I was like, well, what's the point of making you level up? But it doesn't really matter because you have to play the story. The enemies become harder, but you level up at the exact same time. There's no, it's like level gating. There's no like where you, you can't just run away and do leveling up and become overpowered. You just kind of can't do that because of the way they've allowed the drops for the upgrades for the weapons. It just, it's weird. But I will say the, the gameplay itself is fantastic. The story is incredible. I can't not recommend it at all. It's easily maybe a 10 out of 10 from me. 
But there's obviously a few little things which I think they just try to throw too much in. They just try to be like, oh, you know, we've got this, we've got this, we've got this. And it's like, you know, when is it enough, right? I know they had to add more to God of War just purely because of the fact that it didn't want to be too simsy, too simsy. I think Spider-Man 2 is going to have the same problem, but I think we'll see on that one. But I see, they, I know they've got to build and grow, which I think they did do. I don't think they needed the RPG elements to do that in any way, shape or form. Still a fantastic game. Platinum Trophy, dead easy. All right. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Without a doubt, the hardest Platinum Trophy I have ever done. Without a doubt. I've got a video on this one, and it's actually one of my most viewed videos on the channel, which is excellent. And I'm glad, because there was times I was sat at like 3 in the morning on a Friday night looking at the screen being like, this game is literally taking my soul. It's difficult for a few reasons, mainly just the fact that the arcade mode. I might be able to find the trophy, I also might not. You know, you got to do the scores of the story. Here it is, mission mode, right? So, complete 100 missions, it's literally just doing the combat for each character, following instructions on screen. Sounds super darn easy, but it really isn't. Everything has to be so well-timed, and not just how you, your moves, where the enemy is, and everything, it is so complex. Someone who's never done a fighting game before, it was goddamn brutal, I have to say. Absolutely goddamn brutal. But it's also one of the rarest platinum trophies I have at like 1%. So I'm taking that one, taking that one big style. The trophies, the rest of the game is pretty standard and apparently it's one of the easiest Marvel vs. Capcom games you can do. But also I've read on the forums that actually Marvel vs. Capcom 3, some are actually, the, all the mission modes are easier, but I have no idea. I'm just speculating at this point. Maybe I'll have to try it and find out. <laughs> but also I actually boosted the online. Without the, on, without the boosting online again, it would have been absolutely brutal. So yeah, take out the pinch of salt, but it's a really good fighter and the story is so fun with like Ultron and Sigma, you know, Infinity Stones, generic Thanos kind of deal, but it's a really good game and I would recommend it if you like fighting games, but the fact that it's difficult, bear in mind going into this, it's a hard motherfucking game. The Platinum is hard, the Platinum is so difficult, so if, you, if you've done fighting games, you'll probably find this easy, but if you've only done Mortal Kombat and Tekken, this is still going to be really, really fucking hard, but if you're a pro, you got this. It'll give me a new found respect for how good people are who do fighting games because it's just staggering. Because this is the first game I've ever played where it didn't feel like I could get good enough to do it. You know, platforming games, Bloodborne games, these games are all based on understanding the environment and eventually you get good enough. But Marvel vs. Capcom fighting games is actually the speed of your ability to press buttons and your ability to register moves and respond on in milliseconds. And I think other games, other type, other genres of games just do not have that extreme requirement of uh, response time required that this game had. And it gave me so much more respect for people who platinum fighting games. Like, you guys are goddamn impressive. All right, next we've got Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, another game. I've basically made videos about every game I've actually played. So I'm not gonna lo I'm not gonna hang around on this one too much. I went back and played it after five years. It took a while and it wasn't as bad as I remember it being. I think back when I played it, I just hated it. Stuck on the high road for ages and ages, couldn't handle it. And I went back and I did it and I was like, you know what? It really ain't so bad. It's it's a fun, it's reasonably fun. Nothing was too difficult. There's only two or three levels which made me want to claw my eyes out, which was mainly the one of the ones, the city, one of the ones, the city ones, with the pelicans and the lizards. The goddamn lizards. But I haven't done the DLC, so I did, when I, by the time I finished Crash, I tried Stormy Ascent. I was like, I'm going to get the gem, but my god, Stormy Ascent is a different kettle of fish. People said, like, oh, you can just kind of just jump in and do it. And I was like, no, this game's this level, Stormy Center, is easily going to take me three to four hours of playing it non-stop. I was done. Crash did push me. It, it was probably a six or seven out of ten, but I am shit at platformers, I have to say. And it pushed me to a level which I just thought, no, like, I just, I can't be dealing with it anymore. And I, I, I knew when to quit. I knew enough was enough, guys. Next, we've got Arcade again. Another game I didn't really speak about, just purely because I didn't think I really had... Just because I didn't think people on the internet would really care. It was a free PS Plus game at some point. It is a four. It is a four-player sort of isometric. Well, it's not really. It's a four-player. Well, how would I describe it? It's a three. It's a four-player shooting game where basically all you do is you make your way in the level. And then when you finish the level, you kill enough enemies. The level, the world levels up and becomes harder. To finish a run, you have to beat four bosses in the world, and you have to beat something like is it fifty-eight or fifty? two actual full runs and each run initially took us about an hour and a half but we ended up getting in about 30 minutes so you can imagine the grind is immense here and there's loads of there's a lot of rng trophies to do with weapon kills and things like that but on the whole it is so fun the slide mechanic in this game is exceptional the gameplay 
is so goddamn sound. The only problem with the game is the fact that when they've only been built for 20 hours worth of gameplay, that is the biggest problem. Like, they just didn't support it after four or five months, they abandoned it, and it is a bit barren and empty, and I think with a bit of support, if it really worked on the multiplayer aspect of it, it could have been so much better, but it was released to a bad reception and abandonment. I don't really get why, because the gameplay is actually fantastic, and the leveling up system, and how you upgrade your weapons and stuff, it's all so good. There was so much potential here, it's still an 8 out of 10 for me. I still think it's a fantastic game. The Platinum is grindy, very grindy. You've got to play a lot, a lot of runs. You've got to like the game. But it's still a great game and I would recommend it if you want something you can just play 45 minutes at a time. But probably with friends. Next is Hogwarts Legacy. So as you can see, I haven't actually even Platinum this. There's kind of a story here, to be honest. I played it and I've actually started watching the Harry Potter again. So I'm feeling a bit more... Well, up for Harry Potter, but at the time I had so much on. I just finished Marvel vs. Capcom, and it just made me really want to play a game, an RPG with magic in that I knew. So I ended up playing Skyrim, <laughs> and I actually got about five hours into this game. Ten hours. I actually record loads of footage. I'm a Slytherin. I recorded about you know ten hours of footage. I am going to make a video on this eventually, but just getting around to it. Plus, there's so many glitches in this game. I was reading about them in forum. People were messaging me saying like, "Watch out for these glitches," and I was just like, "Yeah, this game's so long that if I was to play." and get a glitch after 50 hours, I know I just didn't have it in me to go back. And I felt the same in God of War Ragnarok as well. I had a glitched trophy, one of the collectibles didn't turn up on the actual tracking in the game, in the built-in game. And I was like, oh, if I, if I can't get it, I'm not getting the Platinum, I'm just leaving it. And I think it would be the same with Hogwarts. But what I played, I did enjoy a lot. Team Sonic Racing next. A pretty fun go-karting racing experience like Mario Kart. The Platinum Trophy is a bit of a slog because of the fact that just you have to do all the races and the hardest difficulties and it's a team based game and the Grand Prix you get points for where you finished and where your teammates finished and they're just so awful. Like they're just awful so you can come first every single time and still not win the Grand Prix which means you're doing them over and over again you know 10-12 minutes just have to replay them over and over again. If you're going to do this game it was free on PS Plus at some point just do it with a couch corp friend they will help you so much through the most of the actual trophies because it is Pretty straightforward, 30 hours, maybe 20, maybe 15 if you can get through all the races. It took me like five hours to get good at the game, so it took me a little bit of a while to get going. But once I did it, I got a Platinum, and it's another Ultra Rare Platinum. So I can see why people didn't do it just purely because single player wise, the Platinum is a massive ball ache. But I did enjoy it, so you know, meh. All right, next we've got Crisis. I got this game absolutely ages ago. I actually applied for a code for it, and I got it, and I was like, oh, excellent. And I never ever got around to playing it. I felt a bit bad about it. And I was like, I'm going to go and do it. It's a game that I've... I played Crisis 3 back in the day. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. But didn't really know what was going on because I hadn't played the first two games. I still liked it as a kid. I was like 13, 14 when it came out. But I went back, played the first game. Went back, played the first Crisis. Masterpiece of a game. People have said it runs like, like trash on the PS4, PS5. It does like crash every time you go to a checkpoint. But it's 60 frames. It looks decent. It doesn't look like a top of the range game it doesn't look like a remaster of crisis either because crisis was like renowned for being the best looking game in 2007 it kind of looks like a remaster of a 2012 mid-tier game if that makes sense but it doesn't take away from how good the game is the cloak and armor system is fantastic the the hardest difficulty is a little bit challenging it seems a bit unfair at times literally like the spot you from miles away and stuff but i didn't have any real struggles with the game other than the last boss which was a oh, fucking awful awful that leaves us to uh, my last two games, which I don't have plans for. Skyrim and Battlefield 2042. Skyrim, I went back to it and I was like, I'm going to make a video on this. I'm going to make a big video on this, a big project. Probably minimum 45 minutes, maybe upwards to like 70 minutes. And I'm like halfway through. I'm not halfway through. I'm not even finished the main quest yet. I'm onto the last level of the main quest. I've done the mage one because I was playing as a mage. So I am I am the arch. I am the arch mage of Winterhold right now, you know no big deal and i'm going to finish the main story and i'm going to figure out which which way i'm going to side in civil war i'm leaning towards the imperials because uh because i feel like i always always side with the storm cloaks but i'm an elf and they're incredibly racist so you know i don't want to side with the side that hates my race just because i've got big pointy ears and i can make badass fireballs so i'm going to work work through this slowly over the next six months by the time i do another video on this maybe i'll have the platinum 100%, maybe not. And Battlefield 2042, it's an okay game. I'm not gonna lie, it's not the best Battlefield. Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1 is so much better. 
But again, some people in my Discord were like, do you want to just play it? It's pretty easy. We'll just work on it over 100 hours. I was like, yeah, go for it. Why not? I'll just work on it when I can be asked. Um, it's fun to play and jump in and out with your friends. One thing I'll say is really fucking weird, okay, is the fact that they've removed the leaderboard from it. Like, how fucking woke can a game be where it's actually removed the leaderboard so you don't know how good or bad you've done in the game? Like, I think that's absolutely staggering. Like, we're all winners here because we can't even see who's how many times I've died. I've died a lot. My kill death, my key day is like 0.5, but I've never been good at first person shooters. Never, ever. And Battlefield is even more annoying because the, the gunplay is nowhere near as good as Call of Duty. Like, honestly, people say it's better. People say it's, it's maybe more realistic because I'm just spraying and missing everybody, but it's nowhere near as rewarding and fun to play as Call of Duty. And with the whole massive maps, you kind of find that you just spawn, you're driving around for ages and you get yourself killed. But, you know, again, that's because I suck. And there you have it, guys. There's my update. Six months worth of gaming right here. Let me know down below what your last six months of gaming are, or just your last couple of plats. Be cool to know if you have any suggestions for games that you want me to play, particularly if they're under 15 hours, because I'm thinking about doing like a something, something with shorter games. I would appreciate it. And on that, Timmy says bye. Kimmy! Dexter says bye. You can't see him. Peace. Kimmy!